In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to determine the inverse of a function. So let's start with our first example. So it says determine the inverse. So what you're going to do is the following. You're going to change this to a y. So we're just going to say y equals to negative 4x minus 4. Then what you, okay, so that's just like the introduction. That's just what you do in the beginning. Now, step one is going to be to replace, or let's rather say switch, x and y. So you're going to switch these two letters around. So I'm literally going to say x equals to negative 4y, take away 4. Step 2, get the y alone. So you're going to take this equation now and you're going to move everything around so that you can try to get the y by itself or alone. So I'm going to take this negative 4y to the left and I'm going to take this x to the right. So you're going to end up with 4y on the left and then negative x, negative 4 on the right, because this x became a negative. Then we're going to have to divide by 4 in order to get the y by itself. So you could say um, negative x, negative 4, and then you can divide all of that by 4. Or what some of you might like to do is to say um, negative x over 4, take away 4 over 4, and then you could simplify this to become negative 1. And so you could say that over there, and then we have to rewrite the answer using a g again, but because it's the inverse, you're going to write it like this. You're going to say g with a negative 1 over there. That stands for inverse, and then you're going to go negative x over 4, take away 1, or you can write it using that format, but then you'll just change this part so that this means inverse. That means inverse of g. Let's do another one. So remember, step one, or let's first just take this and write it as a y. just makes it easier to work with. There we go. Ah, now we're using y and n. Okay, so you're not going to switch x and y. Now you're going to switch y. Now you're going to switch n and y. So you're going to change this to an n, and then you're going to switch this one to a y. Now your next goal is to get the y by itself, or to get the y alone. So the way that we could do that is we first need to get rid of this 5. So this is a fifth root. So the opposite of a root is a power. So what we'll do is we'll raise both sides to the fifth power. And what this 5 will do is it'll cancel out this root. And so in the next step, you're just going to end up with negative y take away 2. On the left, you're going to be left with n5. Now get the y by itself. So I'm going to take this to that side, and I'm going to take this to that side. So you end up with y equals to negative n5, take away 2. And now we just rewrite this using a better format. So they used f. So we'll say f negative 1. And then negative n5, take away 2. Let's do another one. So first step, just replace this with a y. Everything else you can keep the same. Next step, switch this letter and this letter, switch it around. So we can say x and then negative y plus 2 over 2. Now we need to get this y by itself. But before we can even get close to that, we got to get rid of this 3. So this is a cube root, this whole thing here. It's a cube root. So the opposite of a root is a power. So what we'll do is we'll raise both sides to the 3, because what you do to the one side, you're allowed to do to the other side. So what happens is that this 3 completely cancels out this root. So on the next step, you're left with negative y plus 2 over 2. So you're left with everything except the root. And then on the other side, you're left with x3. You now need to get this y by itself. So let's quickly rewrite this. So what I would do is I would multiply this side by 2, so you end up with that. Then I would take this y over to the other side, and I would take this to the other side, so like that. So you would end up with a positive y on the left, a negative 2x3 on the right. There we go. Then I would just rewrite this as f, but then because it's the inverse, I would do it like that. Like that. We have two more examples. So step one, just replace this with a y. Why did I put a negative 2? Next step, replace the letters. And now you need to get this by itself. So what I would do is I would 
try to almost get like a common denominator. So that common denominator would be negative y plus 3. So that means we're not going to do anything to this side, but we're going to have to multiply this side, the top and bottom, by negative y plus 3, so that it can also have the common denominator. This is like solving an equation with a fraction. So you're going to end up with this at the top, and at the bottom you're just going to end up with that, because I multiplied top and bottom with negative y plus 3. And then on the right hand side we'll just be left with this. Now when you have an equation and the bottom numbers are the same, you can leave them or you can ignore them. And so we're just going to rewrite this equation like this. Now, don't multiply this x into the bracket. The reason is, is you're trying to get this y by itself. So what I would rather say is rather divide by x on both sides. Because here it will cancel. And so now we end up with negative y plus 3 equals to 2 over x. And then I'm going to take this y to the right because I want it to be positive, and I'm going to take this to the left. So on the right-hand side, you end up with a y, and on the left-hand side, you end up with negative 2 over x, add 3. Then we need to rewrite it using function notation, so we will replace this with a g, but then we must say negative 1 to show that it's the inverse equation. There we go. Here is our last example. So first step, just replace this with a y. Next step, replace these two letters around. Now take this one to the right, I mean left, and there we go. So now what we can do is we can get a common denominator. So the common denominator would be y plus 3. So I'm going to multiply this one with y plus 3 and this one with y plus 3. In fact, to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to multiply together. I'm going to multiply both of them at the same time with y plus 3. So it's going to look like this. And then at the bottom, you've got the common denominator. Now that the denominators are the same, we can cancel those parts out. And so what we now have is this. Now here's my advice. Don't multiply these two brackets together. You're trying to get the y by itself. So just divide this on both sides. So here it'll cancel. And so you end up with that, like that. Next step, take this 3 over. So that's the answer. But now replace this y with g. And then put a negative 1 to show that it is the inverse. 